Today, I want to talk about 10 things that can affect your retirement in the Philippines. Um, this isn't about scaremongering or anything like that, it's about pre planning. Uh, some of these things you'll be able to plan and make sure nothing happens, and some you won't. Um, let's take, for example, the first one on the list is exchange rates. The exchange rates fluctuate like no tomorrow when there's something going on that the markets don't like. Um, the British exit nonsense, for example, and I say nonsense because the only thing it's cost is at the is money at the moment. It hasn't actually done anything else. They haven't even put the uh, um, Article 50 forward to actually make something happen. It's just cost money um, and a lot of chaos and stupidity from uh, politicians quitting left, right, and centre. Um, Farage, Boris, and Cameron. That's it, leave a sinking ship. Anyway, so that difference, to put this in perspective, the British exit has cost me 86 euros a week currently uh, because of the way it's dipped the pound. Because um, I transfer out of the UK to, the, um, to Spain. And obviously it'll have the same sort of effect with the Philippines, the, the market is down simple as that so you have to be aware of those because it can be a quite a uh, big change and quite quickly when I went to the Philippines in 2007 I was getting about 98 uh, pesos to the pound it's now about 69.70 oh probably less now I haven't checked today but the whole point is that's that's nearly 30 percent difference over that period of time so this is why I always say you want to try and factor in making an extra 30 percent you know, because if you factor in making an extra 30%, because you've got to bear in mind, if you retired, you've got spare time. So making an extra bit of money just to top up your money every month is worth the effort. Um, next one is health. A lot of people ignore health. Um, but a lot of people that are no longer in the Philippines have had, or they're in a wooden box in the Philippines, have had issues relating to health that may have been prevented, but also may have also had better ma medical cover um, if they had some money. Um, for example, a motorcycle accident um, and losing a leg, um, having a heart attack and having to sell your house because they abuse you in the Philippines. They want the money, so they'll get you to sell your house and everything if they can. Um, I recommend just paying and getting the hell out of there. If they're not actually delivering any service you can't do at home, get out of there. Um, I took my own stitches out of my foot for example um, because when they actually did the stitching up initially they were crap at it so it's like well they're gonna make a mess of it and I'm paying for it I might as well do it myself so bear in mind health can have an adverse effect to the point you may actually want to go back to the West um, because you may actually want to be with other members of family or whatever um, but it can have an effect that a lot of people don't factor in into their lives. Um, I always have enough money in my bank, for example, for some medical emergencies, but also being able to fly back to back to Europe if needed. Uh, unseen mistakes and problems is next on the list. These vary considerably. Um, this could be invest in this deal; it's the best deal ever, or it could be. Um, Problems within the family, finding out the the property you bought with your wife, the the deeds are fake or something else, something adverse that basically swallows up your savings. This is why you need to be very savvy in the Philippines. Don't assume somebody's going to look out for you. The the legal system's going to work in your favour. It often does not. Um, even with developers, big developers will keep things buried in the legal system for decades if they can um, because they've got money to do it so you have to bear in mind it's not a straight cut as you may think it would be uh, um, coming from a western country um, which gets on to the next one trust trust is normally where you'll lose money somewhere in the Philippines be it small amounts be it somebody stealing um, something out of your garden every month be it somebody that's getting your groceries and overcharging you and other bits and pieces or somebody actually rips you off big style by selling your car or something while you're overseas or you gave them a chunk of money uh, for whatever reason say somebody was sick and you said can you pay for your sister or whatever I'll, I'll pay for it and there was no uh, sister that was sick they just stole the money 
those sort of things are very very common in the Philippines and you need to be aware of it next one is localized inflation inflation not only affects you because you've got money affected by exchange rates but the Philippines artificially prices things up at stupid rates you see things go up in value just because it's in another year um, you see it with things like motorbikes and stuff they just add some more money on it because it's a new year and you're just like but it's last year's model it doesn't really matter there, there's a lot of inflation in the Philippines you've got to bear in mind it's an incoming economy as well it, there's billions sent by OFWs that artificially cre keep the Philippines economy high so you have to factor that in that you're going to have some sort of local inflation gets back to the 30% money making uh, on the side etc just to keep keep your money flowing because if you sit still it's devaluing all the time um, number five one of the most severe ones is people not having a backup plan this has seen many a person jump off a bridge jump from a building or do something else rather silly um, I would say if you get in that situation or getting close to it just get yourself back to the west somewhere you can sort yourself out in the west it's much easier to sort yourselves out nobody sits and laughs at somebody that's actually turned around and had issues somewhere and gone out because you know what you tried you tried and it's very likely you've had something adversely go wrong anyway so I would say do not give up I would say go home get your life back on track do a year's work or whatever it will take to get you back where you want to be and then come back there is always something that you can correct don't assume you're just going to be left there um, I've got I've got some friends that have got problems in the Philippines at the moment relating to passports and stuff because of the way the system's been set up and they've been struggling to get out of the country um, because the immigration guys want their payoff for amounts owed but at the same time they can't make any money because they haven't got their papers and then they, it's just crazy stuff um, also the ex-wife disappeared with a passport um, so having a backup plan is important um, what do you do if something goes wrong do you have a member of family that can look after your stuff in the UK US or whatever I keep my suits and stuff at my parents address so whatever happens I can arrive in the UK in a vest and pants even um, and I can start work within a week and get things back on track but it's all about planning um, I keep a thousand pound float for the first month in the UK getting back to work um, I'm on my brother's insurance so I'm insured on his car there's all these little things that I do um, as a backup plan and you need to do that you need to think because I know many people go but I'm not gonna go back everything's gonna be perfect I'm gonna get there gonna be sat on the beach with this beautiful woman she's gonna bring me cocktails and I'm gonna sit in the hammock and just sit there yeah if, if that happens great great but when a typhoon whips <laughs> whips up the beach and the trees that your hammock was attached to is now 40 foot the other way uh, be aware you still need a backup plan next one is not what you expected that's quite common um, the Philippines can be a place you love or you hate or somewhere in between um, you need to be able to either accept that it is what it is or you love it or if you really really hate it you need to think what do you need to do do you need to change or do you need to go home or do you need to go somewhere else because I know some people that have gone from the Philippines to Panama I know people in Buenos Aires and other, other locations that started off in the Philippines but the whole point is they started off there and then after you know the six months everything's great you know I'm in holiday mode I love everybody I love everything then they've stuck their foot, uh, foot in a open sewer with that grey water and you can see the odd dead rat or something in there plus all the cigarette butts and stuff and it's all gone over your foot and then you've got the video key blaring and the um, neighbours they're generally annoying burning fires at 5pm you get the smoke come up and go over your clothes and all this all the little things that get under your skin that is normally gonna lead to somebody needing to at least take time out and then come back um, 
because everything's fine until it starts getting under your skin. Um, so you've got to factor that in. What if you don't like it? What are you going to do? Now we're getting into the bigger stuff. Relationships. Relationships is not just about you and a partner. It's about you, a partner, your neighbours, your f partner's fr family, the partner's friends, and how that impacts on everybody. Um, some neighbours can be an absolute nightmare. Some can be fantastic. Some people have had really abusive wives. Some people have had really fantastic. The f fact is, they can have a good or bad effect on your life in the Philippines. And you need to sit there and gauge up what do I want out of this? What is going to make this work for me? Um, and then try and meet halfway with some of it. But if, if it's somebody that's going, oh, I need money for this, I need money. I know what you need. You need the door. Goodbye. I'm not here to um, become the uh, the Pope by constantly giving away stuff. Well, that, that's actually wrong with the church. Let's leave it at that. Um, but I'm not here to be Bob Geldof giving away stuff. Um, I'm here to retire and enjoy life, not have people constantly knock my door. My child's sick. My dog's sick. Um, the neighbor's roof blown off. Whatever. You're not there. You're not the savior. You know, it's not your problem, and don't let people make it your problem. And uh, number two is family life, which is not that these parts of family. It's about when you think, right, I'm retired, meet a beautiful woman, that's it, I'm just going to enjoy life, and then she gets pregnant, and then you're now into being the daddy all over again with the extra costs of the Philippines which can grow quite considerably uh, from the medical costs to the schooling costs, the vaccines and just the general cost of life um, because I find, I mean myself, I find my kids costs um, they cost as much as I do um, with the restaurants and stuff because when you've got things like diapers and all the other bits and pieces it adds up quite quickly and the diapers aren't for me before somebody mentions it <laughs> I have the restaurant costs they have the diaper costs um, but the, the point being is 